Glocks to 42. How the hell is everybody? Keeping busy, having fun, building models, spending time with your kids. Number one thing, spending time with the family. It's all good to build models. But hey, anyway, here we are. Third kid in 2020. I have been busy this month. That could be because I spent the entire month of January sitting on a drilling rig for, well, 24 hours a day living on site and having quite a bit of time uh, in between rounds to build models. So anyway, the Type 16 Maneuver Combat Vehicle from the J Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force. This is Tamiya's 135th Military Series number 361. It's a good kit. It's not a great kit. In fact, I'm not going to say it's awesome. It was okay. It was fun. It wasn't overly complex, but Tamiya really is starting to piss me off. Lack of photo etch for simple basic stuff and lack of handles. Putting in little blobs of freaking plastic for a handle is really starting to piss me off. Sorry guys, but there's just a ton of little plastic blobs along here that are supposed to be freaking handles. Come on Tamiya, give us some handles. Anyway, let's take a look at the undercarriage. All right, the undercarriage. What didn't I like? Absolutely nothing. The undercarriage was awesome. It even has movable front two front the, the front four tires are steerable. The uh, linkage is awesome that they give that uh, to me is made for you. It's nicely detailed, but it isn't overly complex and difficult to build. I can just imagine the nightmare if friggin dragon did this this would be the, the the model would have probably ended up in the dumpster if if this would have been a dragon kit i can just imagine it being a complete nightmare to me nice went together good no fit issues 20 minutes half an hour an hour this entire running gear was all done like i said the only things that i can really bust to me as balls about are these god gosh darn little chunks of plastic where there should be handles right there those should be handles, not chunks of plastic, guys. You can do better, Tamiya. Been building you guys stuff since the 70s. You can do better. Now, you might notice that I did not put the front or the back plate in. I did that on purpose because I didn't take any clear paint with me. So I want to show you a little trick that I just figured out. Duh, I'm sure lots of guys have been doing it, but I just figured it out. So let me set this up here. Hang on. Let me just zoom in a bit. Yes. Okay, here we are. All right, so where are we at here? There we are. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, the front, those look good. Those look very realistic for headlights. So what we've done here is this is just the factory clear light. That's clear as well. And that is the Tamiya um, clear orange with about six or seven coats of paint on it left to dry out. Now, how did I make it look so realistic? I used to paint them silver, but then I just decided, you know what? Get some tin foil, glue it shiny side up with some uh, Formula 560 canopy glue, and by golly, you have very realistic looking headlights. Eh, come on, we can do it. We can do it. There we go. I like them. I'm going to start doing that in some of my cars. And we also did the same thing on the back tail lights. If I can ever find it there. Okay, hang on guys, this sucks. Okay, so as you can see here, not quite picking it up on the camera, but there's the orange, there's the red, and there's the clear. Same thing, multiple coats of clear Tamiya paint, followed up by some tin foil. Now, this side didn't turn out as well because I didn't let the paint dry properly. As you can see, it kind of pushed out because the paint wasn't 100% clear or cured. So guess what? Mud. Okay, we're back. So, two figures. Awesome. That's one of the number, my most favorite things that Tamiya does is they add figures, which I think everyone should do. And then Tamiya does some really weird stuff like this barrel. It's a two-piece barrel. You've got a seam running down the middle. You've got a seam through here. You've got um, this piece, I believe, is a one-piece barrel. But, and then you have to drill the... Uh, you have to drill the holes out here for the muzzle brake, which just baffles me. Why, to me, it wouldn't give you just a little bit of photo etch. They give you a little um, masking tape template to put on there to drill out the uh, 
the uh, muzzle brake, which kind of is bizarre. They also give you um, masking tape cutouts for all of the um, clear parts, but you still have to cut them out. They're not pre-cut, which kind of baffles me. Anyway, um, that's that's to me a for you. Uh, just a little bit of fin, uh, Phil. This was the hull went together really well. The turret was a bit of a pain in the buttocks um, to put together. The it's just a little bit mushy, which kind of surprised me. We got a little bit of filling in here. Now we also have a little bit of fill on the back here. Now there should be a seam here, but you can see light. You can see light through it. So I just used some of my plastic putty to just clean that up a bit just so that you could still see a seam there but there wasn't any gap and these nasty um, sinkholes on the back of the hatches were also a bit of a really to me really anyway um, soft rubber tires which go together really well they're, they're nicely detailed but there are no or is there let me check there's there is a little bit of detail, but there's not a lot of detail for the amount of detail that are on modern tires nowadays. So I'm not exactly sure what went on there. And then this tire doesn't quite as turn as much, but that's okay. You know what? It'll be it turns it, it don't doesn't turn good one way, but it turns really good the other. So maybe that's just my construction. Anyway, there we have it. A rather rambling rendition of the <laughs> Rambling rendition. That sounds like a country and western song. Anyway, I am rambling now. This is the Tamiya Type 16 Combat Maneuver Vehicle or Maneuver Combat Vehicle. However you want to say it. Uh, would I recommend it? At a good price, absolutely. Um, if you can find it for under 45 bucks, snag her up, man. I wouldn't pay much more than 45 uh, Canadian for it. I can't remember what I got it for. I think I ordered on eBay as well and I got it for a good price shipped from China. So there you have it, guys. <clears throat> My work up to so far in 2020. Y'all take care. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.